One of the most consumable parts of your e-mountain bike is going to be the drivetrain component. So today I'm going to be giving you a few tips to help you get way more miles out of it. First up, what do we mean by those drivetrain components? Well, we're starting up at the top with a shifter. You've got your chain ring, chain, and of course the cassette and the derailleur all make up those drivetrain components. But some of them will wear out faster than others. Most notably will be your chain, the cassette, and sometimes the jockey wheels too. These can wear out a lot faster than some of the other components. So why does your drivetrain wear so quickly then? Well, it's down to the trail that you actually ride and all the gunk and the debris flying up onto your chain will wear that chain out. Now, one of the worst culprits for this is riding at a surface trail center. You get all of that horrible grinding sand and paste flicking off onto your chain and wearing it out super fast. But obviously, if you're riding in the sand, mud, water, all that stuff on your chain is gonna wear it out at a faster rate. Secondly, how you shift gears on your drivetrain will also affect the life of it. Now, me and Steve have both broken chains countless number of times where we've grabbed a load of gears in a high pressure scenario, we've dumped a load of gears in turbo mode and that chain will simply snap as it tries to shift across the block. So just go easy when you're changing those gears. And thirdly, and pretty obviously, we've got that motor combined with your power is gonna put that chain under a lot more stress than just the chain ring and the cassette like it would do on a normal mountain bike. And talking of normal mountain bikes, a lot of the componentry that we still use on our day-to-day e-mountain -day e bikes are designed primarily for mountain bike use. So aside from that recent release of uh, Link Glide from Shimano, that stuff is said to be a lot more hard wearing and a lot more durable than our traditional mountain bike drivetrain. And the last thing is bad maintenance and purely not looking after all of those components. One thing a drivetrain definitely doesn't like is a lack of maintenance and lube. Okay, before we get started working on this bike, one thing I want you to double check before you do any work on your e-mountain bike's drivetrain is make sure that that power is definitely turned off. If you're messing around with the chain or the chain ring and that motor kicks in, it could potentially trap your fingers or any clothing. So just make sure, double check that that power switch is definitely off or you can even remove that battery to be doubly sure. Now the first thing that we're gonna be doing is checking the wear of the chain. Now if your chain is worn, it's gonna take out all the other components in your drivetrain, making it a very expensive item to replace. But if you do catch it in, in time, your chain is actually the cheapest item to replace out of your whole drivetrain components. If your chain is worn, now this is gonna to lead to sloppy gear shifting and inefficiency in the system, meaning there's gonna be a lot of friction in all those rollers, and in turn, you're gonna be losing out on battery range. And to measure chain wear, you're gonna need a chain checker. Now, these are really simple tools, and they kick off at around five pounds for a super basic one. All we do with this is find a section of chain without that quick link in it, drop it into the links, so we just drop it in, super simple, and then we take a reading off of the last section of this, and this will tell you how worn your chain is and whether you need to replace it. Now, one thing that will maximize your chain's life is a clean drive train. Now, this needs doing before or after every single ride that you go on. And a great tool that is gonna make chain cleaning a load easier is going to be a chain bath just like this. So to use a chain bath, it's super simple. All we do is get some of our drivetrain cleaner in there, add it to the tank on top. I'm only gonna go to about halfway full on this because my chain is actually looking fairly clean. All we do then is split this, put it over the chain, starting at the quick link so I know how many revolutions I've done. Clip that in place. And obviously, if you're doing this on the floor, you might have to uh, chock your chain ring. Obviously, if I'm pedaling backwards, it's not gonna do anything, but luckily I've got work done today. And it's just a simple case, get in the middle sprocket so you've got some good chain line going on, and then just wind that chain through the cleaner. And as it goes through, there, I'm going to press that button, let some cleaner go in. As it goes through, it's just got a series of brushes in there. In turn, it's going to be cleaning it all off, degreasing it, ready for you to take that degreaser off, dry it off, and then apply some lube. And I can see all that gunk literally falling off my chain into the bottom of the bath. And I'm surprised actually how dirty this chain really is. 
Of course, you can use a normal, uh, just like a brush and some degreaser for this if you want to go old school, but this is a really neat way of keeping it all super clean and really easy to do. Right, so that's the drivetrain cleaner working its magic, taking all the old lube off and all the debris off of my chain. I'm gonna leave that for a couple of minutes, then I'm gonna remove it. Now, with a lot of chain cleaners, you actually have to remove it with water. So you can, of course, hose it off, but then you risk contaminating your disc and things like this. So preferred method that I like to use is actually to fill my chain bath up with water, cycle that chain through it a few times, removing all that old cleaner off of it. Then I'm gonna dry my chain off of course, if I were to apply lube to a wet chain, it's just gonna uh, trap all that water into the chain and in turn rust those rollers out internally. Uh, and that is something that is definitely gonna ruin your chain. So we just rinse all the drivetrain cleaner off. Now it is time to dry the chain. Now there's loads of different ways of doing this. I just like to use a microfiber cloth. You can of course use leaf blowers, are really good at getting all this out, compressed air, any way of just making sure there is no water whatsoever left on that chain will suffice. Using the correct lube on your chain can make it last a lot longer. For e-mountain bikes, we do have some EMTB specific lubes out there on the market, and these are really designed for the job in hand. We have a dry lube providing these dry conditions and a wet lube. Now, a wet lube is designed not to be washed off your chain. You know, when you're hitting bad weather conditions, rain hammering down to it, it will literally cling onto your chain. And a dry weather lube, well, this applies as a wet lube, but it evaporates and it leaves a non-sticky surface, so it's not gonna be attracting all that dust and debris to your chain. And it's really vital that you use the right lube for the conditions that you're riding in. Another option for lubing your chain is the use of chain wax. And we hear some riders having some great results using that stuff. And to lube your chain, it's super simple. There's a few mistakes that people can make when it comes to lubing, and that is lubing the outside of the chain. So if you're applying lube to the top side of the chain, all this is gonna do is literally fall off when it gets to the bottom of the chain, and it's not actually in contact with any of the metal components on the bike, such as the cassette and the chain ring. So when you're applying lube, just make sure you apply it to the inside of the chain, so this side, and that way it's gonna be in contact and penetrate that chain really well as it goes round. Another mistake is to apply too much lube. Now this is called excessive lubing, and this will just turn your chain into a really sticky mess. So the best way to do it is actually go around roller by roller, applying it one by one. It is time consuming, but that way you're not gonna to apply too much lube, and it's a really great, great way of inspecting your chain for things like damaged links as you go around. Another thing to avoid is using like those three-in-one oils or old car engine oil, things like that will really attract all that gunk and debris from the trail and wear your chain out super quick. And when it comes to applying that lube to your chain, you can get different applicators. One will be a spray kind of lube, which isn't that great because it can drift across onto your brake rotors. If you are using a spray lube, just make sure you're directing it down at the front of the chain ring rather than trying to spray your chain around here because that will drift and of course contaminate your rear brake rotor. My preferred method is definitely a dropper bottle. You can be a lot more precise and you're not gonna waste as much lube as those spray bottles. You also need to clean and inspect your cassette. For cleaning it, just a general degreaser over that, just with a brush to clean things up and get a tool in there to pick all the gunk out that's between your cogs. And then we inspect it for wear and damage. Now wear, excessive wear, is gonna be where the teeth have gone, gone all sharp and have lost that edge, and in turn will let that chain skip over it, particularly when under load. And damage wise, well you can actually snap these teeth off. If you've got any mission, missing teeth on your cassette, then you definitely need to replace it. And one last thing to do if you have got that rear wheel removed from your bike is do a bit of a free hub inspection too. Give it a spin, if it is sounding rough, whip off that cassette and get into that free hub give it a bit of love and maybe a bit of a re-grease too. Just make sure everything is working fine because if that fails, it could be the end of your ride. And once you've cleaned up that cassette on the back of your bike, it's time to move forwards to the motor and have a look at your chain ring. Pretty much the same applies to your chain ring as applies to the cassette. If you're looking for damage, obviously bent or snapped off teeth is gonna be an issue. And again, that wear, you're looking for sharp pointy teeth here and particularly pick up on your drive chain as you turn that chain ring round. If that chain isn't leaving the chain ring nice and clean, then it could be a sign that your chain ring is actually worn and needs replacement. 
And moving on from the chainring, we have the derailleur out back. Now the moving parts in your derailleur are gonna be the two jockey wheels. Now these are quite prone to picking up a load of crud and in fact running quite slow and removing a lot of efficiency from that drive train. So with these, it's a good idea again to get some of that degreaser onto these, just give them a bit of a quick brush off and inspect them as well because you can in fact knock teeth off of these jockey wheels. And if you've got teeth lost or you've got excessive wear on these jockey wheels they obviously are going to need replacement and making that rear derailleur move usually you're going to have a set of cables coming down to the rear mech obviously on this bike you've got the wireless sh uh, shifting going on but if you have got cabling running down to this just make sure that it's well lubed up and is running nice and smooth crisp upshift and downshifts is something you're definitely going to need on any mountain bike because if you've got a derailleur jumping in and out of gears well that's definitely going to increase wear on your drive train if you are experiencing bad shifting it's usually a good idea to replace the inner and the outer cable at the same time and re-index that shift and sometimes you can get away of lubing that cable but my advice is to fit fresh cables in there that way you know it's going to last for another season and the last thing to be doing with your derailleur is have a quick whip round with an allen key just make sure the mounting bolt itself is nice and tight and you've usually got a couple of bolts holding in your jockey wheels these are quite prone to come in loose so just check that they're nipped up to the manufacturer's specifications And one last thing to check on your e-bike, if you are experiencing rapid chain and cassette wear, is the actual gearing of your bike. Now, this will really depend on where you're riding. If you're riding on a lot of flat terrain or maybe downhill, you're gonna find yourself in the smaller cogs on your cassette. And in turn, you've got a smaller surface area to spread all that wear of your chain going round it. Now it's a great idea to actually upsize the, the size of the chain ring at the front and in turn you're going to be using a wider spread of your corset so you're going to find yourself in some of those bigger cogs particularly when climbing uphill and in turn that way you're going to actually spread that load a lot better than just sitting on those smaller cogs on your corset and wearing it out super quick. But don't go crazy on that chain ring swap. We're only talking about a couple of teeth difference. So if you've got a 32 on there, maybe go up to a 34 or maybe even a 36, something like that. But it will make a huge difference as to the gears that you use on the back of your bike. But there's a load of tips in this video. Hope you've enjoyed them. Get involved in the comments box down below about what ways you found to make your drivetrain last a lot longer. Maybe you made that swap to chain wax and you've seen a big difference. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN. Whilst you're there subscribing, get in the EMBN shop. We've got loads of kit in there all ready for Christmas.